This is the Doug Ritter RSK from Benchmade. I had this knife now for seven years. Interesting bit of backstory. When SRDV first came out, there was a number of reports of chipping, low durability of the edge, poor sharpening, non-existent edge retention, just a rash of complaints. This knife was a replacement for an RSK which had those issues. This one, the replacement, also had the same issues. The original owner sent it to me, very frustrated with Benchmade. The original knife had the problems. The replacement, this knife, had the problems. When I got it, sharpened it a couple of times, exactly as he said. Um, nearly impossible to sharpen, just wouldn't get sharp. Looked at it under magnification, and you could clearly see that the edge was actually fracturing under the stones. It was just breaking apart. So the edge wouldn't even form, and as soon as you tried to use it, just be obliterated. No edge retention. So I gave it to my brother about seven years ago, and he's just had it banging around ever since then. This has been reground recently. When I got it back from him, the edge had thickened significantly and had a very wide secondary bevel. So I flattened the primary grind, and as I've noted in other videos, very flat primary grind goes into a transition bevel and then a final apex bevel. Now, the only issues with it is that it developed a bit lateral blade play. And again, this has been used relatively ruggedly in construction, cutting drywall, cutting shingles, cutting fiberglass insulation. So it's developed a bit of side to side or lateral blade play. A hint of up and down, but a hint. And the action on the blade is very stiff now. And it won't, there's a huge amount of resistance right at this area because the actual lock doesn't want to push back by itself. So normally you had to hold the lock, pull it all the way back, and then the blade will swing freely. That could probably be fixed if it was just fully taken apart and cleaned up and uh, lubricated. So the interesting thing is, I've been doing some edge retention comparisons on cardboard. I had a number of S30V knives, and I wanted to have a look at this one again. And the edge retention was poor, and the initial sharpness was poor, just like I'd experienced seven years ago. But I was thinking to myself, and this is one of the, the keys of attempting to be scientific, what if this is wrong? What else could be the problem here? Maybe the steel is actually okay. So I figured, well, my brother's after using it relatively harshly for the last seven years. Maybe the steel is just really stressed. So I de-stressed it by cutting into the stone, resharped, and repeated this several times. And each time, the performance got a little better. The edge sharpened a bit easier, and it became much sharper. And after doing this three times, de-stressing the edge, sharpening it, de-stressing, sharpening, de-stressing, sharpening, it got to the point now where it matches the performance of the better S30V knives I have, like the paramilitary from Spider-Go. So then I did an edge retention run on the cardboard, performed very well. Now, going back to seven years ago, how come the performance was so bad back then? Because they burnt the steel at the edge. Now you can see how significant the wear is. Uh, this sharpening choil notch is much smaller now than it used to be. Significant amount of metals after being removed from this, so all the weakened metal from the initial burning is now gone. And I think in retrospect, that was probably the reason for most of those early reports of S30V having really, really poor performance. And the problem was, for a lot of these companies, uh, these knives that they started putting out were the very first knives they used in a very high vanadium steel, so very low grindability. So what happened is, all of a sudden, you had people who were used to steels which were much easier to grind, putting S30V blades on, and simply they weren't reacting as well. It was taking longer for them to grind. So essentially, they just pushed harder into the belts. More heat, damaged the edge, and of course the common solution to that is jam the knife in a bucket of water to cool it down. So great, now you've overheated the edge, now you've quenched it in water, which these steels are not meant to be quenched in. So now you've not only weakened the edge by overheating it, you've also destroyed the durability by microcracking it. Great combination. So, and that leads me to believe that's why so many people have problems with S60V, which was the precursor to this as well, because S60V is even worse than this in terms of grindability. So they were most likely overheating those blades as well. So, long story short, this has an excellent steel. There's nothing really wrong with the steel itself, but it was horribly burnt when I first got it. So much so that a lot of steel had to be removed to get down to quality steel. Now, at this point, the knife performs flawlessly for what it is. And in retrospect, this now is in contention, well, actually surpasses the original paramilitary as a knife I'd use for just normal everyday carry utility, that type of work, if I wanted sort of a one-handed a folder sort of that type of knife. You know, if I was going for a more traditional like the Duke Duke or Open or something like that, they cut much better, but again, they don't have pocket clips, don't have one-handed ease of opening, that kind of deal. 
But if you look at this knife, the original reason why I had such a low opinion of it is because the steel simply would not sharpen. So it couldn't get sharp, couldn't hold an edge, simply did not cut very well. Now that problem is gone. And with that problem gone, you're looking at a very solid performing knife. Now this is an original paramilitary which has been modified to significantly improve the ergonomics. The end of the handle has been cut off. This had a very sharp bird's beak back here. All the edges of the clip have been fully rounded out. The inside of the handle slabs have actually been rounded out. The index finger coil right here has also been enlarged and this area has been ground down. So now this has a very comfortable and very functional secure handle. So looking at the two of these now, to me they're very comparable. One of them in terms of the other, I'd be just as happy with one as I would with the other one. But without these handle modifications, the RSK I would prefer it because the ergonomics of the handle are much more superior than what the paramilitary had in its original configuration. The paramilitary 2, from what I understand, solves a lot of these issues and looks pretty much like this modified one.